I hope all you and your families all had a blessed Easter. Uh, this is video lesson number two. Uh, let's say a quick Hail Mary. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've talked about things like when, the, uh, when you look at the Old Testament and the New Testament, a lot of things that were talked about in the Old Testament come true later on in the New Testament. And that was very, very much the same as it pertains specifically to Jesus. Uh, and we read things that uh, they kind of give you a hint what's coming. They call that a type, like T-Y-P-E. So a type in the Old Testament is really something that we will foresee later on in the New Testament with the coming of Jesus. One of those things, very specifically, and when Jesus' passion all started, was the Jewish Passover. The Passover, that, which was the exodus of the Jewish people fleeing from Egypt. I'll give you a quick, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but in, in Exodus, in chapter 12, it talks about the Passover ritual. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell your whole community of Israel, on the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake in it. Here's the key. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. And I can keep reading, but I'm not going to keep reading this whole thing. But a, a one-year-old lamb, the age really doesn't matter as much, but without blemish. And wasn't that Jesus? Jesus without sin. And we hear so often Jesus called the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And it all started on that Thursday, the first night of Passover in the upper room where Jesus and the apostles were with the Last Supper. And at the Last Supper, he did a couple different things. Obviously, the most important thing he did was institute the Eucharist, where he told everybody, this is my body, this is my blood, using the representation of that bread and the wine to tell us that, and to tell the apostles that you are going to be able to Bring the Holy Spirit down upon that bread and upon that wine going forward. So I'm always with you and you will be able to turn that bread and wine literally into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. That's why our priests are ordained. And if you recall, I had mentioned to you, our priests are all ordained by the local bishop. Every bishop can actually be traced all the way back to one of the first apostles. So it's very interesting uh, that God, that Jesus himself, told them that this is what you're going to do. And we're so blessed to be able to have the Eucharist. One of the other things he did uh, on that same night, on the Holy Thursday, was he humbled himself, if you recall, and washed the feet of the apostles. And Peter specifically said to him, you're not washing my feet, Lord. And he says, I have to, because if you don't let me wash your feet, you won't be able to come into my kingdom. And then Peter said, well, then, you know, wash my head, my hands, wash everything. That's how important it is. I need to be with you, Jesus, in your kingdom. And we must realize that in Jesus humbling himself, what he basically said to the apostles is, I do this for you. I'm as high as you can get. If I can do this for you, well, you need to be able to do it for each other and for others. And that comes where Jesus told us to love one another. One of the other things after reading that, a lamb without blemish, Jesus without sin. Where did that connection of Jesus being the lamb come from? And I'll give you one more quick reading. It's really almost one line. <clears throat> And it's in John, where he talks about John the Baptist. And when Jesus got there, 
and saw John the Baptist in the Jordan baptizing everybody, basically what John the Baptist said when Jesus got there, the Lamb, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And again, here was John the Baptist also, like Peter, showing that humility. Lord, I can't baptize you. And Jesus saying, but you must baptize me. Because if you baptize me, everybody else who gets baptized going forward will be cleaned and cleared of their sins once I do what I have to do. And of course, he didn't tell anybody quite yet that he was going to suffer and die for us during the course of his time with the apostles, just a little at a time with the parables, he gave them all hints on exactly what was going to happen. And of course, there it was. What's the most important thing that we can actually talk about right now in a lesson plan that's really geared all around Passover, all around the Old Testament, talking about what's going to happen. The lamb is going to be slaughtered as Jesus was slaughtered. And we look at all of the things that Jesus did for us in such a short time on earth, walking around everywhere with his apostles and spreading the good news. And that good news from him was there is a heaven. There's an eternal life for us to look forward to. All you have to do is follow me. And how many people didn't follow Jesus? And how many people did? The Lord brought Jesus down onto this earth for the Jewish people to follow him. Not many did. What Jesus wound up having to do was, have to, was saying, the Jewish people are not listening. Lord, the Jewish people are not listening. Well, we're going to have to go over after the Gentiles. And the Gentiles, the word Gentile, really refers to people who are non-Jew. They were not Jewish. The woman at the well where Jesus said, give me water. And she said, oh, I, you're not supposed to even ask me for that. You know, I'm not worthy to do that for you. I'm, not, I'm looked down upon. And Jesus said, no, no, you know, I know who you are. And he told her all about him who she was and she was just like mystified went back and said this man is like this he's a prophet and a lot of people thought Jesus was a prophet but the apostles came to learn that he wasn't just a prophet Mary Magdalene the blessed mother Mary knew before he was even born when the angel Gabriel came to him he wasn't a prophet he was the son of God he was God put on earth in our image to live the life that we did and to suffer and to die for us. And it's just an amazing thing. And it's so hard now for all of us to even grasp. We didn't have in our churches that, that Easter, that, that Holy Thursday Mass, that Good Friday service where everything in the church is just stripped bare. When you see the priest walk in, I don't know if any of you have ever been to a, a Good Friday service. Um, there's no Mass. It is a communion service because they do have communion left over from the day before uh, where it was consecrated. Um, but the first thing that happens when the priests walk in is they prostrate themselves on the floor, face down with their face right to the floor. Because they are saying, what is going to happen? This is the most holy day of what's going to happen. Jesus Christ, our Savior, on Good Friday, died. Again, how many times can I say it? He died for us and for our sins. And he did exactly what he said he would do on the third day and raised himself up from the dead. When we look at all of the things that make sense to us, it's very, very hard. Once again, for us, we weren't there. 
But we have to believe the writings in the Bible. One of the things Jesus told the, the Pharisees when they were committing him to be crucified and taking him to Pilate, he told them, and this is what really got to them, this is what really made them angry, aside from Jesus finally saying when they asked him, are you the, are you the Messiah? Are you the Son of God? And Jesus said two simple words, I am. And when he said that in the old days, if you blasphemed, you were a blasphemer, they, the Jewish people would literally rip their clothes. Oh, you, you blasphemed. I can't believe it. You have to be put to death. And when Jesus said, I am, that's what the, the heads of the Pharisees, that's what they did. They ripped their clothes. They said, he has to die. He has to die. Did he really have to die? No. Were they afraid of him? Yes. One man, so powerful, getting more and more people following him with a little bit different logic than what they, the Pharisees, taught in the temples. Very, very, very strict Jewish traditions. Everything right pointed out of the Bible. You must do this. You must do this. You can't do this. You can't do that. But Jesus came there and said, no, th th it's a new beginning. They asked him, why, why are you doing this on the Sabbath when he did heal somebody on the Sabbath? Isn't it better to heal somebody? No matter what day it is? These are the things that Jesus finally started to get the Pharisees really annoyed with. And they saw his power growing. And they were the ones with the power. They were the ones with the money. They controlled the temple. And, you know, they had to get rid of Jesus. They didn't believe he was the Messiah. And when Jesus finally died on the cross, and you guys know the whole story. You know the whole passion. They arrested him. Before they arrested him, Jesus was in the garden and, and suffered for us, knowing that he was going to absorb all of our sin, talking to his father, okay, father, I'm ready, let's go. And then he scourged at the pillar, ripped apart, crowned with thorns, made to carry his cross all the way to the top of the mountain where they finally crucified him. And that crucified Jesus on the cross if we could only have looked at him, what you would see is all the sins of the world on that cross, all within Jesus, his battered and bloody body that he was giving up for us and finally dying. And one of the things he told the Pharisees, he said, I will rise up in three days and I will destroy the temple and rise it up in three days. What they didn't understand was they thought he was literally going to blow the temples apart and then build them up with brick and mortar in three days. That's not what he was talking about. Jesus is the temple. Okay? He's going to destroy what's living there now and he's going to rebuild. He's going to come back. He's going to be resurrected in three days. Something so amazing. And one of the things, just as a sign, if you read the Bible, one of the things is when they when they did uh, sacrifice the lambs, they did it behind a big red curtain in the temple. They didn't want everybody seeing them cutting the lamb up, but that's what they did. And one of the things that happened when Jesus did finally die on the cross and said, it's over, put his head down, he died, the big red curtain inside of the temple ripped in half the long way so everybody could now see. And basically, that's exactly what Jesus was talking about. Now everybody's going to see. Will you follow me? Will you change your ways? Will you love one another as I have loved you? Will you listen now to the gospel as proclaimed by the apostles? Eleven men, after Judas was gone, sent out 
to start a whole new faith, a whole new meaning of God. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The love of God, of the Father, the love of Father for the Son, the love of Son for the Father, that's where we get the Holy Spirit. You guys are going to get confirmed sooner or later. Don't know when. But when you do, you're going to get that Holy Spirit back into you. Never left. He's still there. He's there since baptism. But wake up because the Holy Spirit's coming and he wants you to be awake. He wants you to be full of the Holy Spirit and then go through your life just like that. That's all the time we have. Nice and short. Have a few questions once again. I hope you did your homework last week. It will be checked shortly. Uh, God bless you all. And I hope to see you sooner rather than later. I have to get up and shut the video. God bless.